Thank you everybody for attending. My name is Adrian Amandi. I'm the director of the Education Resource Center um, for the California School for the Blind. Um, I'm very excited today uh, to have our career vocational team from CSV with us. Uh, they are actually actively in the middle of a short course this week as well. So we have some virtual short courses going on this year uh, to are offered to students throughout the entire state. And this week happens to be our, uh, this week, last week, next week happened to be our career tech focused short course. But these guys also are the primary career tech, um, career vocation teachers and program specialists on our own campus. Um, and this is an opportunity for them to provide a little bit more outreach to get the word out on some of their techniques. So thank you, Jonathan, Nanako, Shannon, and Joanne for being here today. And I will zip my lip and let you guys talk. All right. Um, hello, uh, my name is Jonathan Waite. Uh, I'm a vocation teacher at uh, California School for the Blind. And I'd like to introduce my uh, colleagues in the vocation department. Um, She'll go first to uh, Joanne Tanaka. Hi, my name is Joanne Tanaka. I am the Vogue teacher uh, at CSB and I am a print reader. Yeah, if we're gonna do that. Thank you, Joanne. And over to Nanako Yamada. Hi, I am Nanako Yamada. I am uh, one of the transition teacher specialists slash apartment uh, program teacher at CSB. I uh, am a screen reader user slash braille user. And then this we have uh, Shannon. Hi everyone. My name is Shannon Johns and I'm the principal of our career vocational programs at CSB. This is my second year at the school and I'm a print reader. Jonathan, back to you. Yeah, okay. I'm just about to share my screen, guys. I'm just going to bring up a, um, a present, the presentation that we're going to be uh, reviewing today. There we go, just one second. All right, so hopefully um, you should see CSB transition to employment um on your screen at the moment so if anybody would like this presentation afterwards to review it um we have descriptions for the images as well um, um i realize it's not accessible on the screen but we can send you your own copy um, if you would like that to review afterwards um, we're going to try and move through this presentation um, fairly swiftly uh, i want to be sensitive to your time uh, if you have questions um, please um, put them into the chat box. Um, and uh, we have Winnie, uh, Winnie and Abby um, from CSB, um, and they'll be um, collating those questions. And so we should answer them at the end. Okay, so um, moving on to our first slide. Um, we just want to talk briefly about the, the components of the, uh, of the uh, transition partner plan that we have at CSB here. Um, CSB's vocation plan um, delivers uh, job exploration counseling, uh, workplace readiness training, workplace based learning, self advocacy, counseling on post secondary education. And last but not least, liaison services with the Department of Rehabilitations and regional centers. Um, our, our job at CSB in the vocation department is not just to provide um, exploration, work, job exploration, workplace readiness, but it's also to connect students with the Department of Rehabilitations um, and regional centers and transition them successfully out of CSB um, into their post-public school uh, experiences and life. Um, and just, it's really important to add that um, while there's just the four of us um, that are represented today, I think uh, I noticed we had Zach um, in, the, um, in the audience and Zach's one of our fantastic job coaches. We have a number of job coaches who work with us, uh, work with our team, work specifically with our students coaching them at all of the job sites 
Um, then those job sites are both um, on campus at CSB and off campus at CSB, uh, off campus in the Fremont area uh, and a little bit beyond. And our job coaches um, have experience working with students with visual impairments. Um, and there really is really no program like this in public education. So uh, our, our, so our job coaches and the support staff are absolutely critical um, to the program. So um, we're going to explain these in a little more detail as we move as we move through here. So um, I wanted to explain that um, our relationship with the Department of Rehabilitation. Some of you guys may have partner plans yourself with the Department of Rehabilitation, or you may have workability programs. Um, our program is the Transition Partner uh, Program, and it's with the Department of Rehabilitations. Uh, we're lucky enough that we have a Department of Rehabilitations Blind Field Services Counselor, Mario Gomez, um, on site at CSB when we're in person. Um, and students who are at the school or who transfer from uh, home districts to the school area, Mario picks up and becomes their primary DOR contact. Uh, and he helps them um, with DOR related um, things. Uh, at, at 16, if the student is not a DOR client, um, CSB assists students um, in conjunction with Mario to become clients of the Department of Rehabilitations. Um, and this enables, um, um, amongst other benefits uh, that the DOR um, client relationship has, uh, we are, as a school, um, able to um, employ uh, our student workers as youth aides. And this is a special employment position of the state of California. Um, and uh, as such, we're allowed to pay students uh, the minimum wage, which is uh, presently $14 an hour, and we'll top out at $15 an hour on January 1st of next year. Um, and we provide um, uh, paid employment experiences um, for our students, typically starting at 16, they'll do around about two hours per week. Um, uh, and that this is, of course, depends on their availability and their schedule. Um, there's so many other things going on at CSB. I'm sure there are so many things going on for your students as well in the, with ECC. Um, it's, it's a challenge often to find, um, find time for students to get work experience. But where we can, uh, we, we start at around two hours and then we can build up to um, a maximum of 24 hours. Um, so you know, per month uh, for students. So it's about six hours a week. So we can provide almost a, uh, a day's worth of work per week for our students who are getting close to retire uh, to um, graduation. Um, so um, so that's that's what we do. We like to sort of build up as students. We know whether the student's going to graduate at 18 or graduate at 22 or anywhere in between. Um, we work towards building up work experience on campus and then off campus. And, and uh, we'll talk about those uh, in a little bit. So. Are you gonna address when you get the kids started too, Jonathan? You noted that they get started at 16. Do you, do you work with the DOR ahead of time? Oh, uh, well, yeah, this is actually quite a good segue. Um, so right now, um, so I've just come to the, sec to the next slide, which is integrated, uh, our integrated vocation plan. And, and what this shows is really how we work with students who are pre-vocation. And uh, when we, we talk about pre-vocation, we're talking about before 16 years old, because that's when we're, we're eligible. Um, that's when students are eligible to become clients of the Department of Rehabilitations. Uh, so at, at 16, the work can begin, so to speak, right? So that's when the full relationship starts. But, um, before that, we do pre-vocation um, and we do community service. And I'm going to let Joanne talk a little bit about this. And this is about the preparation that we do for students prior to um, prior to becoming 16. Um, so um, over to Joanne. Would you like to explain the community service, Joanne? Yeah. During that time, the students are um, brand new to going off campus doing jobs. So we do a career 
um, awareness class where we talk about soft skills. And, um, and we also do off campus where they are doing volunteer um, service. Um, it's a fun situation for the students. Um, I, I, on the next slide, um, there is a category called community service. And what we do is we teach soft skills. We talk, talk about attitude, communication, how to be a good listener, how to do speaking skills, work ethic, you know, working as a team member, um, time management. And so all these are covered in the class and these skills are also carried over into the locations that we go to. Um, I guess I can talk about the community service with the next slide. Yeah, um, John, if you hold on for a sec, I'll just go through those other three yeah. and then we'll come back to the community service just so everybody gets an understanding of the flow. Yeah. So, so generally speaking, community service, as I said, is, is a pre-vacation yeah. uh, experience. Um, and it's at this time as well when the students are 15 um, and they're probably going to be turning 16 in their next IEP year, um, the vocation team get involved and help out with, uh, with the beginnings of the, trans of the transition plan. Um, and, and, the re and one of the primary things we do in that, in that year when the students are turning 16 in the year prior is to talk to the, the students and the families and the teachers and other service providers about, um, about the benefits of the Department of Rehabilitations. And so when the student turns 16, uh, the, the family is ready, if eligible, to complete that application. Uh, so we can get the students going as soon as possible. Um, so, so we start with community service. Then the next level is, is on campus. Um, we have a, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the Rocket Shop convenience store that we have on campus at CSB. And this is the first uh, work, um, paid work opportunity students have post-16. Um, this is where students build their basic skills. In, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, we then have off-campus off, off and on-campus advanced opportunities. And we'll talk a little bit, about, a bit more about that. This is essentially students graduate the on-campus basic program and they do more sophisticated stuff. Um, and then finally, um, which is finally the sort of ultimate goal, if you like, of, of students um, is to participate in non-supported off-campus, uh, which, which is, you know, um, is what it says, students are, as independent as possible, but have access to job coaches and uh, orientation mobility and what have you to get to and from job sites. So, uh, Joanne, let's pick it up again here um, with um, slide. Yeah. So the slide has a picture of a student working, um, sitting down with um, pieces of paper in front of him. What it is, is we have the opportunity, it's a volunteer situation, um, to go and practice our soft skills. And we are going to a local church and we are putting their flyers together. And so they have to work as a team because many times there's like five or six pieces of paper. So every person has a um, flyer to put in. And so they have to work as a team. And one of the um, wonderful parts is they have to work together and they have to make sure the other person is ready. So they always say, um, if they're not ready, they'll ask, hey, um, so-and-so, are you ready? And then the community work. So they, it's a wonderful experience for them. They put them together, they're just the furniture. They have wonderful opportunities and they look forward to it. And the Good part, nice, nice part about it is when I see the students as a job coach, they'll come up to me during the day. Hey, Joanne, are we going to the church to work? And I'm going, yeah, we are. And so excited. Another location that we go is the Coyote Hills, which is a regional um, part of the regional, East Bay Regional. And they do wonderful things there. Um, vacuum, they dust the display, they water the plants. Um, we even got to fold t-shirts so they have, could use the practice that they have from school for a project that they have. We also do um, 
a local uh, food, uh, let's see, um, ecological agriculture um, organization where it's a food garden and they give actually their food to um, the what is vegetables grown to the food bank. So they have, we have gone there and the kids love it. As one student tells me, Joanne, I like getting dirty and messy there. Fantastic, thank you, thank you Joanne. Mm -hmm. So this is a, so the, the community service part is a really critical part of, our, of the transition for, of mm -hmm. students from a sort of chore based if they've been doing chores at home or they or they are residential students and they and they're in the dorms and they're doing some level of chores the community service is a component that sort of ties it to the vocational experiences that that come beyond that um, so most of the students if not all of the students who participate in community service will ultimately uh, participate in paid vocational experience so thank you joanne i'm just going to move on to the next slide mm -hmm which is um, on campus. So um, there, are, there are two slides here. Um, one slide is, um, shows a student um, who is using a talking uh, cash register um, to receive payment for um, some items that are being purchased within the store. Um, and it's a regular convenience store like a 7-Eleven. You know, we, um, we have all your you know, classic food items um, and we also do um, two or three days a week for students actually will shop uh, and prepare food. Um, I, I, call, for... I call BS, Jonathan. You got rid of the Slurpee machine. <laughs> you are relating it to 7-Eleven and we used to have a Slurpee machine. We did. We did. I don't know whether that was a health and safety thing, Adrian. <laughs> ah, that, what, well, I, what part of health and safety was I worried about when I was I, getting yeah, a Slurpee? I, I think it was the midnight drop-ins. I think we had to clean that machine. I think that was the issue. So, so it's it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we actually have just got. We're very lucky. We have a relationship as well with. Um, uh, uh, we're able to get um, uh, resources from the uh, Perkins funds from Sacramento, and we um, have purchased recently a sandwich maker, which is exactly the same as the sandwich uh, making um, setup that they use in, uh, in, a, in a subway restaurant or in any sandwich preparation center. Uh, so we're very excited to use that. We've been using something like that in the last year, but we've got a, we've got a brand new one. We're super excited about that. Uh, we've also made pizzas in the past. We have a student who, from scratch, incidentally, we have a student who does, um, uh, who makes burritos for, for staff, we always sell out. All of our students are required to do a, uh, a food safety course. Mm -hmm. So this, this food safety course is, is mandatory actually in California if you work in the food service business. So um, students have a transferable skill if they have this certificate, which they can do at CSB, they could also use that outside of CSB. Um, it's a really vibrant store. It's, it's open every day that the school is open throughout the year. We don't, we don't hang around. First day school, students are back. We, we open up the store and we run it right the way through to the, um, to the last day. Um, it's a very popular workplace. Um, students over 18 can purchase coffees and other drinks uh, during break time. Um, and that's, uh, that they get super excited about that opportunity. Um, yeah, it really is a wonderful place. We also have a thrift store uh, in the back, which we're changing at the moment. We 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 do have some um, uh, we do have clothing still available for students who need clothing during the week for whatever reason, emergencies, proms, work, that sort of thing. But we're also uh, creating a fix it space there, and we uh, we should be getting fairly shortly some uh, 3D printers as well, so we can actually start producing things. Um, very exciting, very exciting. It's new stuff. There's other stuff going on too. We've been making, uh, we have one team that's been making braille coloring books that we've been selling. Um, so it's kind of an entrepreneurial zone as well. It's, it's a really exciting spot. So, so again, this is where our students get the basic experience here. This is probably the first paid work they've ever got. So they learn time management here. They learn how to fill out a time card. They learn how to communicate with their bosses, work with their job coaches, um, all the important basic employment soft skills. 
So moving on to off campus, uh, I mentioned, uh, I don't think I've mentioned yet this, this job site here. This is the uh, Harvest Home Animal Sanctuary. It's out in Tracy. Uh, it's run by uh, a former employee of CSB um, who had my job a few years ago. Um, and she are, and her facility rescue animals out of the food production system. So this provides a great opportunity for students who prefer gross motor activities um, to, to literally go out and get dirty and work with animals. Um, many of our students um, love working with animals, may have experienced working with pets or you know, having pets before, but very few have experienced working with goats and pigs and chickens and ducks and and not just the size of the animal but also the noises they make as well so it's, it's quite unique the living skills um, that students learn in the classroom in the cooking projects um, and the left hand far left hand picture we have a couple of students who are preparing food bowls for animals chopping up vegetables transferable skills right there uh, in the center picture we have a couple of students who are mucking out a barn and in the third picture we have the same students putting those um, bins that they filled up into a dumpster. Um, this is a really good job. Um, our students who do this love it. Most of them love it. <laughs> Some of them don't like getting dirty so much. Uh, but the students who love it want to go back. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic program. And uh, again, for those students who like to, you know, who use our other resources at CSB, like the weight room, like to work out, they just love to get out there and shovel and lift and do all that all that gross motor stuff. Um, so I don't know if there's anything either Nanaka or Joanne want to add about off campus. Well, we do have the round table pizza that um, we go to and the students um, do whatever the um, manager tells us during that time. And many times it's just folding the boxes um, but we have made the salad bar, filled up the ice machine, you know, wiping tables, the furniture and everything there. So that's another option for off campus. Thank you, Joanne. We also, mm -hmm. we also work with the Tri-City Volunteers, which is the Fremont mm -hmm. Food Bank as well. And the students work either in the front area in the thrift store. So that this is a lead on from the thrift store on campus that we have at CSB. Um, and um, they also work in the back in the, in the stocking area. Um, so these, these off campus, um, these, these programs run eight weeks. So what we do is we rotate, um, students through these eight week experiences and we have four of them through the, um, through the school year and they just follow, generally follow the seasons. So the students get the opportunity to experience different work environments. Again, most of the students who come to CSB have never had paid work before. Very few have volunteered or had had any real work experience um, and they certainly haven't had the breadth of experience that they will, that they get at CSB. Um, so one of the, uh, the mandates of the transition partner plan that we have with the Department of Rehabilitations is that we provide as many experiences as possible. They actually limit the number of hours that, that students can do one particular work site, which is a little different from workability as I understand. We don't work with the program to place a student. Uh, we work to provide experiences so students can decide what avenues they want to pursue in terms of careers. Uh, and that's quite an important differentiation between the transition partner plan that we have with Department of Rehabilitations and workability. Also, the, the, the added challenge we have, of course, is most of our students are residential, uh, whereas workability you're usually placing um, with um, entities and business in the local community and so you have kind of a different relationship with your with your employee um, employers potential employers so moving up back to uh to on campus advanced so this is where students are able to um participate on campus um in jobs that um, build on the skills that the students have got in the rocket shop and I was wondering if Nanaka, would you like to talk a little bit about the on-campus uh, um, job that Teresa's doing, or there's an image of Teresa doing? Sure. So now, so those 
so we have advanced on-campus job, which is for the students who got uh, a certain experience through the uh, pre uh, previous ex working experience with us, uh, like what uh, Joanne and Jonathan just presented. And so they kind of have idea what kind of uh, avenue they want to uh, carry, they want to pass through, and then they will feel more confident being independent. Uh, so, uh, so the on-campus job, we tailor a little bit more to um, students' interest and their skills. And then, so we did develop a job um, on campus. Uh, such as the one we have picture with a student who is uh, being a receptionist, a school receptionist. And uh, we have wonderful job coach that's a receptionist um, who is also happen to be a blind. Uh, so he, uh, so under his supervision, the students learn a um, little bit more technical skills how to transfer answer code, transfer um, the phones from outside, inside, and taking notes, and sending the emails, checking the calendars, and, and all professional um, uh, uh, skills uh, they need to know as a receptionist. So this, uh, so this is one of the uh, job we developed for students. So this is quite uh, popular. And the other one is working with IT. We, have, we had a couple of students who are really into technology and they love to um, take part computer and play with computer and so just we have students uh, who work under supervision of our IT uh, department, and so under uh, with under their instruction, they learn uh, how to install properly install the programs, or also uh, how to communicate with the teachers who they need the support um, and also communicate with the students who need their support. Uh, we have lots of Braille, Braille note users. So if the, there's just some update needed for Braille note and this, sometimes the, our IT and student can help uh, those installation. So um, again, with they, they learn communication skills, professional communication skills, as well as uh, they learn technical skills as a I, skills they need as an IT specialist. Thank you, Nanako. So the, the on-campus advanced um, program is a is a launch pad for our off for our non-supported off-campus. Um, and so what, what's happening here is that the students are now working off campus. And I wonder if Nanaka, you could talk about this in, in a second. I just wanted to, to add that what we're putting in the mix now is we're requiring students to travel independently to and from their job sites. We will assist them um, initially, but there's a transition involving orientation mobility. Um, and also students are going to be working directly with um, their, their bosses and supervisors, uh, rather than working with a CSV employee, if they're on campus. Um, they will have access to a job coach, um, but they generally are working as independently as they can and will be checking in. So this is, this is a transition into uh, employment in the wider community. Nako, did you wanna talk about the print and, and also about the lighthouse? A bit. Sure. So yes. So yeah. So this is what I think DOR is called a competitive employment um, in the, um, style. So the students are more independent um, and working uh, almost directly with a 
employers. And then one, one side we have is a t-shirt print shop in Fremont, a very small business, but um, I think we have that picture, right, Jonathan? Yep. Yes, yeah. we do. We do have Ed <laughs> Christian on the printing machine. Yeah, yeah, so we have the student who is uh, operating the teacher printing machine. So he, uh, so he, of course, he used the, um, he used the pro transit, um, or sometimes it went uh, Uber to get to the, uh, get to the job site. And then he learned how to operate the machine as well as because the student is was really interested in graphic arts. Uh, so not only operating the machine, he learned how to design t-shirts as he li uh, listening to the request from the client. So um, actually this, uh, the business owner, she really loved, um, uh, enjoy having the student and <laughs> there. Um, and so they, uh, they're they really hoping to, and, you know, to hire him, but unfortunately he was not local student, but I, we just heard he, he got a job. He is working for another local, uh, another t-shirt printing store in uh, where he lives right now. So that we are really, uh, three about that news and um, so another job job site is we uh it's at the lighthouse in san francisco we had a, a student we had a couple of students who really get up early in the morning and take the part a bus and bart and commute to the lighthouse and they worked and their their youth program and also with a technology department and those students learn uh, how to, uh, oh, one of students learn as a more clerical work, uh, how to gather the data, put in a data sheet and the other students who actually worked before in the, our CSB ID department, he um, also, Worked under tech uh, tech department at the lighthouse, and also so he was able to use the skill he learned at the CSB, and then bring that skills to the uh, to uh, the lighthouse. And what it was great about is the student was not only the professional but. Um, or was able to work with the professionals at the lighthouse. Also, the most of the, their uh, 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 coaches or their mentors are blind, or visually impaired. So uh, they also learn how to navigate uh, their work, uh, or get, the, get the work done um, efficiently as a blind or visually impaired uh, person, people. Okay, thank you, Nanako. So um, just moving on. So um, in addition to the, the, um, the work experience uh, that students receive at CSB, um, they also, um, students participate in careers class. Uh, for some of them, it's every week. For some of them, it's every other week and they have a, a asynchronous um, assignments. Um, the topics covered um, are all linked directly to their vocational experiences, communication, communication skills, how to, how, to work with their, how to work with their bosses, time management, uh, interview techniques, resume and personal data sheet development, uh, work appropriate behavior. So discriminating between um, being a student in the classroom and being an employee, two different roles. Um, and it, it takes a little while for our students to be able to shift between those two behaviors. Work appropriate hygiene and grooming, um, understanding reasonable accommodation requests and facilitating self-advocacy. So that's learning how to, uh, how to coach your supervisor, how to tell them what you need to be effective uh, in the workplace so, um, so you can be as productive as possible. Um, and also job exploration uh, and review and preparation for training and education purposes. 
Uh, that's life, life beyond looking at colleges, online exploration, seeing, seeing what are the requirements for the particular career or job that you're interested in doing. And then, uh, and then matching that up with your, with your current studies. So um, moving on, we're going to talk briefly, we're going to take a little bit of a sidestep here. Um, and we're going to, well, no pun intended, actually, and talk about the the uh, summer transition education program, which is the STEP program, um, it didn't run last summer and it's not running this summer um, for obvious reasons, but it, we hope to bring it back soon. So I was wondering if Nanaka, you'd like to give a little heads up about the STEP program. Yeah, so the STEP program is basically, it is a, uh, in, <laughs> It is a very short uh, three weeks intensive uh, courses what we offer the students who are not CSB students. Um, but uh, what we provide during these three weeks is just that, um, that all experience, vocational experience we just uh, discuss about. It's not like uh, all year around and in constant, but that's and a sample of what we offer throughout the year. So we do the, uh, we um, provide uh, some work experience, community exp community work experience, and also uh, they also learn how to write resume. We talk about, uh, all about advocacy skills, self-advocacy skills, and uh, and job interview, all uh, the career awareness uh, stuff we talk, uh, we provide with our students. But this is only three weeks, so we cannot do everything we do uh, through. We do for the uh, we do uh, we provide through during the year, but uh, it's. Quite intense, but it is very intro, good intro for the students who like to get to know what is the transition, what is the, what is like working. Yeah, can I share also that there a big component of the program is um, the daily living skills. They have to prepare all the meals. We have to go shopping. So and they have to learn how to do cleaning. So, I mean, that is a big component. They are living in apartments, little apartments, and they have to keep it clean, you know, and cook. And so that's a big part of it too. And of course, it's, uh, it's free to the users uh, if, they, if the person is a client of the Department of Rehabilitation. So that's, that's a good thing to bear in mind. All right, anything else uh, before I move on? Okay, and back to Nanako again. Nanako uh, is in charge of our apartment living program. Yes, so again, yeah, so uh, we also, part of the tr uh, transition program, so we have apartment living program. So we have on-campus apartment apartment. She froze. A criteria about safety or so, uh, or can you hear me? Well, you are freezing up a little bit, Nanako, but oh. we're back at the moment. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, so uh, who, uh, who are ready to learn a little bit more about what it's like uh, living independently in the apartment. So we, it, this is a supported environment. So we have, um, we have morning counselors and then afternoon uh, evening counselors who will be on site, but the, the students are responsible to plan their meals and the meals and their schedule they learn, they, of course, they plan, their, they have to shop their own groceries. We provide the shopping, the, uh, the grocery money 
but they have to plan what they cook, what they eat for the for breakfast and dinner. So they uh, we we keep food prep skills and of course organization skills, clean and keep their apartment tidy, uh, cleaning their bathroom, and also uh, we teach uh, recreation leisure skills how to uh, plan uh, for their fun activities. We're not gonna, we don't, uh, we don't, the staff won't tell, okay, this is, we're gonna go movie. Uh, we have to, we have a student, we make students to plan what they wanna do. And then we, uh, the students have to budget and then set the day, um, set the time, when to leave, when to come back and put, uh, skills, planning skills. And also they, the students learn um, budgeting. Uh, so they have to plan, uh, make sure they don't over budget. They don't over spend the money for the grocery. And uh, so, and also uh, um, they don't over spend money for the like a pizza order. So we, they just learn how to um, keeping track of money. And uh, we also discuss how to open the um, bank account and checking the, uh, the bank, how to access the bank. And, and also talk about, uh, uh, about SSI and how to uh, apply SSI. So, so yes, yeah, so this is a big part of actually our transition to uh, many students are really interested in uh, apartment program. Um, so they really work hard to get into the program. <laughs> um, to be, and they feel more, uh, more confident being a young adult. Who is who is re responsible, <laughs> being a responsible independent adult? Yeah, and this is and this program really benefits students who want to live want to live more independently when they leave CSB. Maybe they're thinking about going to a living skills center, um, like the Hatland Center or, or OCB. Maybe they're thinking about going to community college. Maybe they're thinking about living at home but more independently or living with peers. So it, this, this program, this fantastic program um, that Nanako runs really is, is just awesome. There's nothing like it. There's really nothing like it in California for kids who are um, in, in the public school system. So um, I think we have some photos on this page. This is the, this is the next page, Nanako, and we have... Yeah. Uh, do you want to describe those those two pictures, one with Christian yeah. and boys? So we have one picture, the group of students who are peeling uh, potatoes. And this is the actually uh, uh, thank, they are preparing for Thanksgiving dinner. So they plan the, what they cook, uh, the menu, they go, they went to shopping. And then they plan not only for the themselves, they invited the guests uh, for, the, for the meal. And another one is a student, uh, he is the student is cooking the breakfast in, the, uh, in their apartment, yeah, in the student's apartment. And then we think we had the, one of the morning counselor, she was teaching how to use the stove safely. All right, I think we're on to our final slide here. Uh, so just to summarize, the, the purpose of the vacation program at CSB is to prepare, prepare students for a work life, uh, to provide as many vocational experiences as possible to help inform them uh, as to a career. And in this day and age, it's even more important that students get as much experience as possible um, before they leave CSB. Um, we work very closely with the regional centers and Department of Rehabilitation, um, as I mentioned earlier. 
Uh, our job coaches are extremely experienced. Many of them have years of experience working with students with visual impairments. We're able to provide a real paycheck um, and this is great. It allows teachers to work with students on budgeting, uh, working with money. It enables students to see a correlation between, between work and a dollar reward at the end of it. Very, very important. Um, and um, it also, we, we also support students as they branch out and go off in other youth leadership experiences and other workshops. And we provide teachers and students with that, with that knowledge. Um, and it's a great way for the students to apply all of the skills, all of those ECC skills that they um, learn at CSB, uh, orientation mobility, braille, assistive technologies, very important functional academics and living skills, all of those things that brings them all, all together. Um, and so we hope that this program will thoroughly prepare the students and provide a rewarding and fulfilling experience beyond, beyond CSB. And that's the end. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen and then you're good. We had one question in the in the chat saying, "Can you post the slides?" So what we will do, um, unless you guys have a link that you can post the slides directly now, we will certainly include a copy of the slides, the link in our description on YouTube. That we should we're pretty good about posting within a week, so we should have posted by next Tuesday tea. But um, there's still a little bit of time, so if anyone has any questions in general about whether it's CSB programs or about career ed in general. I know that these guys have a wealth of experience in just implementing uh, career and vocational, um, everything from assessments to training to one-to-one -one with students to group work. Um, if somebody has a question, I think this is a great time. And thank you guys. Thank you for the presentation. Uh-oh, crickets, start calling on people. We did this presentation um, uh, a short time ago, just last week, uh, for a group of students on a short course. And uh, one of them asked right at the end, so these are all students not at CSP, but in, in California in general. And, and one of them said, right, when can I start? <laughs> can, I, can I tell the, uh, I, I wanna tell the preparing your own burger story. I'm gonna tell stories, you guys, if no one talks. So we're doing a short course, preparing your own burger. Oh, I see a raised hand. I'll tell it in a moment. Robin, you're up. Um, I wanted to ask you, I missed it if you said it, what was the age for the STEP program? What, were the, what was the age range for STEP once it starts back up? It, it says 16 up. 16 uh, up, okay, thank yes. you. It has to be DOR client. Gotcha, thank you. Any other questions? Careful, I'm gonna go back to my story. So Jonathan, we always put in for our academies, you gotta put in your orders early, like way early, we're dealing with the state and bureaucracy. And Jonathan puts in for a meat grinder and somebody comes to me and says, hey, you wanna approve this order for a meat grinder? No, I don't wanna approve an order for a meat grinder. Who the heck asked for a meat grinder? <laughs> oh, Jonathan did. Happens to be for our, our short course, preparing your, your best burger. Um, which I still don't click in my head. So I go over to Jonathan like, no, like why are we ordering a meat grinder? Um, long story short, when it comes to class, these guys teach the kids how to make the bread, to make the rolls, and they teach our blind kids where the heck ground beef comes from. Um, and it was the most brilliant just display of the expanded core curriculum that I've seen in ages of really taking incidental concepts and concretely presenting them. And the whole week is fil filled with stuff like this. They mentioned, uh, they mentioned soft skills a couple times throughout this presentation. And this team is so good at making our students aware of what they miss incidentally with their visual impairment and teaching soft skills throughout. Chris asked, when will, will the short course curriculum be available? Oh, that's fascinating. Chris, you're asking for like the actual curriculum written out? I'm assuming um, that is a practice. Yes. Yeah, Adrian, I didn't know if you guys had it as a, 
like other TVIs could use it, modify it as C as they need it, that kind of thing? I don't know if we're that slick as far as like having things ready to prepare, <laughs> but I do know that our team is always willing to share. So reach out to these guys and I'm sure they can share with you what they have, but it's certainly- We're gonna put it up on past the literacy and that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know if we're that if we're ready for that, but I'm sure okay, we're right. willing to share directly with you. Okay, just thought I'd ask. Thanks. That's a great recommendation. Yeah, and also we we use uh, some curriculum lessons for our Kelly career class and assessment, so we can just add share the list of the resource we use for our uh, year yeah year round class. We should get that if you can get that. Uh, we can put that in our um, in our YouTube description for this. That'd be super cool. Thanks.